so now there is a two there is a technique which is known as attribute agreement analysis uh, which is used primarily for discrete data when your y is discrete in nature in that particular case we will go for a attribute agreement analysis but when your y is continuous in that case we use a tool called gauge rna so we will we'll talk about both today uh, uh, so in case of a discrete data and you want to measure whatever data you have uh, with with different operators or with the standard so there is a technique which is called attribute agreement analysis it is also known as triple a or it is also known as 3a you can call it either one of them uh, attribute agreement analysis is, is used to uh, assess the agreement between the ratings made by appraisers and the known standards so this is to be done when you have multiple operators and the standard and we want to compare the readings of each one of them to come to a consensus whether my measurement system is good to go or not uh, what is a standard that we follow to make sure that my msa is good to go we talked about it yesterday as well does anybody remember that i said out of 10 this number has 10 percent so let's say there are 10 transaction that i am monitoring okay out of that how many should be good enough when i say that my measurement system is good to go 90% 90% absolutely 90%. yes so so 90% is a standard uh, if uh, 10 people are measuring it uh, sorry if two people are measuring the 10 transactions out of 10 if they match uh, nine times which is 90% then i would say my measurement system is good to go so okay so this is this is something which we can do with the help of attribute agreement analysis so let's look at this example carefully okay so these are 20 transactions which what we want okay so typically in a project if you are a project leader you have done some kind of a random sampling and you because you want you want you are not particularly sure about the data which which you have uh, so what you have done is you have given it to two different operators you have given it to rohit and you given it to rahul as well okay and you you told them that uh, i want uh, you to measure this whether it's a true or a false okay so you see here rohit has given his observation for the 20 transactions rahul has given his uh, reading for the 20 transaction then rohit once again did the same okay and then rahul did once again so what is a technique uh, when the same person is measuring the same transaction again what is a technique called as repeatability sorry repeatability repeatability absolutely absolutely and if i am entering more operators into it the amount of variance what is known as Reproducibility. reproducibility so in this particular example is it a repeatability or a reproducibility 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 more than one operator so it is it is both actually okay. it is it is both because you see rohit has measured and given his observation and rohit is doing it again so here it is repeatability okay yeah and now we have entered another operator rahul and rahul is also doing it again so in this particular case when you when we want to do a measurement system analysis for for discrete data for attribute agreement analysis we have to enter repeatability as well as reproducibility uh, and you see there is a standard also so we have taken the information from the standard as well and standard has also given their uh, rating their rating now how do i calculate msa so i have 1 2 3 4 5 and and out of that how many times all of them are matching so you see out of 20 there are three transactions which is not matching with the desired as well okay so here it's incorrect because you see it is not matching with one through. yeah you see the 12th one also and you see the 17th also so which is 17 out of 20 is good which means my 
MSA is at 85%. So in that particular case, I will not accept this. Uh, I would say that my measurement system is good, not good to go. Uh, and then I will not accept it. For me to accept the measurement system analysis, uh, my standard has to be 90% and above. And then only I would say that my measurement system is good to go now. So in this example, if you see, uh, it is it is not accurate. So this is an example where MSA will not be accepted. So, uh, Simipreet, in case uh, like this, when uh, the MSA is not being accepted, uh, then what normally is done? Like you go ahead and resample and do the calculations. Uh, how how do you go about uh, it? Uh, thank you for asking this question. Otherwise, I would have also said it. So there are two ways to look at. So let's let's understand it very well. In a in a business process or in the in any side of the world majority of the case we have the automated reports okay automated system which fetch the reports and no matter how many times you fetch the report you will get the same result always okay in that particular case MSA is not required because it's a system generated but in case of a manual report wherein the report is being fetched manually and we are dependent on people where there is a person who is part of the MIS team or part of the reporting team, he is calculating it using some formula. And therefore, we don't rely on his calculation and that's why we're doing MSA. So if the report is system generated, wherein if I want to calculate any of the metric, there is a system which fetch the report. In that particular case, MSA is not required. So if that is a scenario, you would mention that my system my report is system generated. You will just uh, take the snapshot of that system where the report is being fetched and say that it is not required. But there are still 15-20% cases where it is not system generated, where MSA is required. Now coming back to the question that you asked, that if it is less than 90%, what would I do? Would I do resampling? Would I go ahead and identify? The first and foremost thing is uh, which I need to identify is that which of these operators has an issue with the measurement system. So when we calculate MSA on mini tab, okay, mm -hmm. we are, we can easily identify that which of these operator has a problem. So right now this, this will become a very manual sort of activity. If I ask you to analyze that out of Rohit and Rahul, which of these operators is not matching with their own readings, which they have given it first time. Okay. It would become very difficult for you. And tomorrow, if you have big data set, then also it becomes very, very difficult to do it manually. So with the help of mini tab, first we can see what is my current level of MSA, whether it's 90% and above. Second, it tells me which operator has an issue for calculating MSA. So let's say, if Rohit comes out to be a defaulter, then probably I would replace somebody else with Rohit and redo the MS. Okay. Because, and then I'll try to identify that what is the formula that Rohit is using for calculating. It seems that he's using a different formula or he's using a different technique. And therefore I would like to coach him and reassess it. Even if, if, if it's a case that he is still making an error, then we would, definitely go ahead and change the operator and make it sure that the measurement system is good to do. So just, just look at it here. It is quite manual here. We are dependent on people who tell me that where I'm currently standing in terms of any of the metric and therefore MSA is required. Right? So we will do the, we will do this on mini tab. Okay. And then you would be able to see that what is the issue that we are facing. So, uh, I will just open mini tab and then we'll do this exercise on mini tab. Okay, so just give me a second. I will just open mini tab.